Greetings. Here we have a question from linear wire antennas. So this question is taken from exercise problem of antenna theory analysis and design by Balanis. Edition number 4, page number 227, question number 4.43. Okay. So see, a 3 cm long dipole carries a phasor current I is equal to 10 e power j 60 amperes. Assuming that lambda is equal to 5 cm, determine the electric and magnetic fields at 10 cm away from the dipole and at theta is equal to 45 degrees. This is a simple question. Let's try to investigate. Uh, let's try to investigate things of uh, this question. You see, so what is given to us? So he gave us a faster current, faster current he gave us a complex quantity 10 e power j 60 amperes. Okay. And then also he gave us a yeah, operating wavelength of the antenna lambda is equal to 5 centimeter. And now he also gave us the length of the antenna, the length of the dipole L is equal to 3 centimeters. Now he is asking us to find he is asking us to find electric and magnetic fields. Determine electric and magnetic fields at 10 cm away from the dipole and at elevation angle theta is equal to 45 degrees. So end of the day, we must be able to find this very important yeah, field forms, electric and magnetic field forms. Now, before we find this stuff, before we find this stuff, we have to decide length of the antenna first, right? So based on the length of the antenna or based on the length of this linear antenna or based on the length of the dipole antenna, we can determine electric and magnetic fields. Yeah, because we can take its corresponding field forms for E and H in the far field regions. Yes or not? Okay, anyways, so length of the antenna will decide the field forms for E and H. So for that we will have to find length of the antenna first. So yeah we have L is equal to 3 cm. Okay and also we have lambda is equal to 5 cm. So now <coughs> what we have is this. So we need to, so we will take now L by lambda. So L is equal to 3 and lambda is equal to 5. So therefore we have L is equal to 3 by 5 lambda. This is nothing but L is equal to 0 0.6 lambda. So we obtained the length, length of the antenna whatever that is equal to 0 0.6 lambda. So what is the, see what can we conclude from this? So now this length, whatever length we have, so this length, so this length comes under finite dipole. So from the length of that antenna, I mean this antenna whatever we have, so we found that we have a finite dipole antenna. Yeah? See, one thing you should know, let me take another color, you see, see whenever we have, whenever we have length of the antenna less than or equal to lambda over 50. So this antenna is nothing but infinite symbol. Infinite symbol means very very small. So infinite symbol dipole antenna. It's very very small. The fields radiated due to infinite symbol dipole antenna is almost insignificant. Okay. This is almost a hypothetical or theoretical situation. Okay. So now also this is say case one. And now case two. Case two is what? Any antenna whose length is greater than lambda over 50 less than or equal to lambda over 10. So these antennas, any antenna whose length is between these two quantities, they are nothing but small dipole antennas. So they are small dipole antennas. Okay. So they are small dipole antennas. The fields radiated due to small dipole antenna is, you know, uh, quite significant when compared to this infinite symbol dipole antennas. Now, the length whatever we have, the length whatever we have for now, this 0 0.6 lambda, this comes under finite dipole antenna. So the fields, 
The fields generated due to finite dipole antenna is again quite significant when compared to so these two infinite symbol small dipole antennas and small dipole antennas okay so anyways <coughs> so anyways we have concluded as of now we have a finite dipole antenna now from this what can we do okay so when we have a finite dipole antenna let me take another let me take another space okay fine now from this as we have finite dipole antenna okay so as we have let me take another color again as we have this finite dipole antenna <coughs> in the far field see in the far field we have e theta and h5 components but we have to check whether or not our fields are in the far field so how do we check it first so see we have our antenna we have our dipole antenna say okay here we'll give some feed and this is what length of your uh, dipole antenna now this fellow is uh, radiating some fields so let me find some field somewhere here we want to find e and h somewhere in the far field region so first of all uh, we will try to find the distance uh, between uh, this dipole antenna and the observation point at which we have we are going to find this e and h all right so now what to do see we know very well that if you have an antenna so i have an antenna okay let me take some antenna so now uh, let me take its region field region or field zones so say from here to here yeah yeah from here to here the, the distance is say r is greater than 2d square over lambda or equal to this yeah so any distance from the antenna satisfies this this inequality then we say that here we have you know here we have far fields yes or not so therefore let us take this 2d square by lambda this is far field region okay so far field region or far field zones now this d is whatever d we have i can approximate d as d and l as same like this okay so for now we approximate in the far fields so d is approximately equal to l for far field approximation where d or l is transversal dimensions transversal dimensions of your antenna given antenna so therefore i plug in this d as l so first of all i'll take i'll take this equality condition now so when we plug in d as l you have 2l squared by lambda so l is equal to what l is given to us three centimeters so you plug in three here so you have two multiplied by three square so lambda is given to us five centimeters right so you plug in so 2 nines are 18 by 5 so 18 by 5 is nothing but 3.6 centimeters so what we obtained r is equal to 2.6 centimeter yeah sorry 3.6 centimeter now from this from this r what can we decide yeah we can decide whether or not we are in the far field zones okay because any distance from the antenna which satisfies this condition indicates we are in the far field zone okay so now he is asking this one determine determine the electric and magnetic fields at 10 centimeter away from the dipole antenna see 10 centimeter away so anyways 10 centimeter away see from here if i go like this maybe this is some 10 centimeter say now whatever distance we obtained r whatever r we obtained that is say here we have 3.6 centimeter okay say from here to here you have some 3.6 centimeter and from here to here say it is 10 centimeter okay so now somewhere here anyways somewhere here we have far zone this is for sure that means from here to here from here to here or beyond this zone you have far field regions so or for field reason whatever 
doesn't matter right so therefore r is greater than 3.6 cm anyways this is far field zone so once you confirm this so once you confirm this then we can venture into our calculations see our calculations they are straight forward okay now you see whenever you have a finite dipole antenna so for a finite dipole antenna you take a finite uh, dipole antenna you take a finite dipole antenna because we have we obtained l is equal to what 0.6 lambda this comes under finite dipole antenna so in the far field so therefore in the far field so in the far field region we can obtain or we have e theta and h phi components okay because we are very familiar with this uh, with this stuff what we know already is that in the far field region so in the far field region radial component of electric field is approximately zero okay so and also e phi component is also equal to zero why because anyways we observed that the pattern is uh, symmetrical azimuthally so therefore this component of e that is e phi is zero so we are left with only e theta now. so e theta is not equal to zero in the far field region so e theta and its corresponding transversal component we have h phi okay so e theta and h phi they will be in the rays in the far field that means these two components are only present in the far field okay so now let me take another slide on that page sorry so now in the far field region for a finite dipole so you know e theta is approximately equal to j eta j eta i naught e power minus j k r divided by 2 pi r all right so now see you know what this e power minus j k r will decide whether or not we have far field component so the presence of e power minus j k r indicates we are in the far field region okay so anyways so so this this has been deduced already so cos kl by 2 cos theta cos kl by 2 cos theta minus cos kl by 2 divided by sin theta okay so this is approximations for e theta component in the far field region so e theta is this and in the far field h5 we have simple right h5 is what e theta over eta okay so in the far field we have these two components now just plug in whatever we have see e theta is equal to so e theta what is eta intrinsic impedance of free space so in free space we have 377 ohms or 120 pi so eta is equal to 120 pi we take it as it is now eta is equal to 120 pi and i naught or i okay so let me go to this this is i or i naught given to us 10 e power j60 uh, and this is a complex quantity so you have a phasor current this, that is i naught is given to us that is 10 multiplied by e power minus see what is given to us let me go back again it is given to us 10 e power positive j60 okay so 10 e power positive j60 this is what i naught finished now we have e power minus j k r so e power minus j well, now what is k here we can assume k as beta or beta means phase constant in this case so beta could be 2 pi by lambda or k is equal to 2 pi by lambda okay this is what k so this k is this 2 pi by lambda and r is what he is asking us to find e and h fields at 10 centimeter away from the dipole antenna 10 centimeter away don't take r is equal to 3.6 centimeter we obtained in the problem because greater than 3.6 is also our far field component so therefore anyways he is asking us to compute things at 10 centimeter from the dipole antenna so we will take this r is equal to 10 centimeter so 10 centimeter equal to 0.1 meter so we will take 10 centimeter as 0.1 meter 
I am writing here. So this is R is equal to 10 centimeter. So 10 centimeter means 0 0.1 meter because we calculate this E and H. Yeah, because the units for E is volt per meter and for H is ampere per meter. So we are taking things in terms of meter. So we converted centimeter to meter like this and then you plug in. Okay. Now of course. Now cos, now what is k? k is anyways 2 pi over lambda, k is equal to beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda and l is equal to we have 0 0.6 lambda, already we have written l is equal to 0 0.6 lambda and we have uh, divided by 2, ok. So multiplied by cos theta, so this is, this is transcendental quantity right, so see cos within cos, so anyways cos theta so already it's given to us what 45 degrees so already we have in the problem he gave he is asking us to find e and h fields at 10 centimeter away from the dipole antenna and at theta is equal to 45 degrees so this is this theta is equal to 45 degree is given to us so just plug in this 45 degrees here so cos 45 so we are done with this component minus now cos kl by 2 so what is cos here we have k as 2 pi by lambda l is equal to 0 0.6 lambda divided by 2 l is equal to 0 0.6 lambda by 2 is this so now this all divided by this one divided by sine theta i don't have space i'm sorry so i'm trying to adjust stuff here so sine theta again you plug in theta as 45 degrees now close this bracket all right <coughs> and we forget this one right so this stuff, uh, this stuff divided by also we have 2 pi r, r is equal to 10 centimeter that is 0 0.1 meter. So you plug in 0 0.1 here. Now you find this, okay, you take your scientific calculator, you find this stuff, you will get a beautiful, a beautiful quantity, a complex quantity E theta. So you will get around 4620 E power J. 11.52 okay so we get this so if you take its magnitude in the far field so e theta is equal to what we get 4620 volt per meter yeah because magnitude of you know very well right so i need not say this so we know very well magnitude of e power plus or minus j theta is always equal to 1 so this is a well known fact so therefore if I take its magnitude, I can take it out this 4620 volt. That means you see we have this intensity, this electric field intensity we have at 10 centimeter from the dipole antenna and that too at an elevation angle theta is equal to 45 degrees. So when E theta is equal to this, how to find H5? So H5 is of course its transversal component. So if I want to find its magnitude, so I have E theta over eta. So anyways, I can take like this E theta over eta. So this is 4620. This is E theta is this. And eta intrinsic impedance of free space that is 120 pi or 377 ohms. So if you find this, so if you find this, you will get something approximately 12.25 ampere per meter okay that's it so we found e theta and h5 of a far field of a dipole antenna of a finite dipole antenna in the far field region okay and the beauty is that in the far field you have real power yeah you could think. we don't find anything like imaginary power in the far field regions yeah so we have real power or time averaged power or simply we have radiated power whenever we say radiated power that radiated power must always be a real quantity okay so fine so signing off for now so signing off for now yeah so please share your thoughts uh, in the comment section below and and yeah so we have uh, this uh, 
antenna lecture series uh, so i'm just uh, throwing some samples as videos for now so very soon very soon later i'll try to post the lecture series of antennas and propagation okay antennas and wave propagation i don't think uh, we should not I, I don't think we should use the word wave we should say antennas and propagation okay anyways thank you